Okay, and you're good to go. Okay. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. We're going to start off with the confirmation of the agenda. Um, has everyone had the agenda sent to them via email? Okay. And can I just get a motion to confirm the agenda? Okay, motion by Matthew, seconded by Megan. Um, all in favor? Okay, perfect. All right, and can we get, now we're gonna go over the disclosures of pecuniary interest. So that's if anyone has any type of uh, monetary attachment to anything on the agenda or any of the items we're going to review today. All right, doesn't seem like we have any. So um, we have, let's motion that. So can I get a motion from someone? Actually, Sydney, if there are no disclosures of pecuniary interest, you can just carry on to the next item. Okay, perfect. Yep. All right, and before we go on, do we want to do any introductions at all, or do you want to continue? Um, I'll just take a moment, Sydney, if I could, and just welcome you all back, and thank you all for, for being here again. It's really nice to see you all again, virtually, albeit, but um, good to see you nonetheless. And um, I'm glad that you're all here tonight, because we're, um, our last meeting was sort of an introduction, introductory evening. And here's where we're actually going to have a couple of deputations. The agenda was pretty bare at our last meeting because it wasn't just a sort of a restart after COVID-19. And um, there are actually a couple of deputations and uh, that means uh, some speakers that have come to present to us this evening. So I'm glad that you've all, you're all here to take part in that tonight. And uh, I also wanted to take a moment to welcome our newest committee member, Demaya. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? It's Demaya. Demaya, sorry about that. Demaya, where do you go to school? Um, Alliston Union. Alliston Union, and what grade are you in? I'm grade eight. Grade eight, welcome. Thank you. Okay, Sydney, I'll give it over to you for item one. Okay, and so the first item is to review the summary report, and that'll be on the down below of the attachment. Okay, a motion to review the summary report. Motion Motion's by received. Uh, Councillor Beattie, seconded by Matthew. All in favor? Okay. So on to deputations and presentations. The first one is Elise Martin, um, a com community and corporate giving officer, and she's from Stevenson Memorial Foundation. All right, and I'll hand it over to you, Elise. Hi, everyone. Well, thank you so much for, for having me tonight, and uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, I'm Elise Martin. I'm from Stevenson Memorial Hospital Foundation. I'm the corporate uh, and community giving officer. Uh, so I've been with the with the hospital foundation for five years now, and uh, I grew up actually in uh, the Alston uh, or New Tecumseh area, I should say. I uh, grew up in Beaton and uh, went to New Tech Beaton as well as uh, Banting. So uh, definitely, it's close to my heart to um, you know be raising uh, funds and uh, spreading awareness for the hospital and the importance of uh, the the services within our community. So thank you so much for having me tonight. Uh, this is my second time presenting to this group, so um, it, it's nice to be back. So thank you very much, and uh, and great to to be on your uh, only second agenda. So thank you very much. So I do have a presentation prepared. Uh, so I don't know if if Pam can share it or I can just kind of go through the slides. There we go, perfect. It's always great when technology works and does what it's supposed to do. So <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so as you can see, my, my title is on there as well as we have, uh, this is our mock-up for what the, uh, our hopefully for our redeveloped hospital will look like. So we have uh, some additional pictures throughout the presentation and some more information. So I'll kind of move through. So uh, Pam, if I could get you to uh, change to the next slide and uh, I 
again, there's me. Thank you. Next slide. There we go. <laughs> uh, so just to give you a bit of an overview about the, the hospital and uh, uh, it's one of those services that uh, you hope to never have to need. However, when you do need it, you're extremely thankful that it's there and in our community. So there's things that uh, we all think about when we think of a hospital. So like an emergency department and that sort of thing. But there's all kinds of other services that we provide at the hospital. So things like dialysis, um, x-rays, uh, or fractured clinics. So if anybody has had, uh, you know, broken arms or legs or anything like that, hopefully not. But if it does happen, we do have uh, clinics there that, that are able to, to treat you um, right in our community. So that's an enormous uh, resource that we're able to provide to everyone. So in, of course, obstetrics, uh, I don't know if uh, anyone on the call uh, have, was uh, actually born at Stevenson, but we've, uh, we actually have uh, over 500 babies are born every year at the hospital. So that's a, an amazing service that, that's within our community as well too. So, and you can, I just kind of put a bit of a summary of all of the different departments that we have uh, at the, the hospital. Okay, next slide. And of course, with a COVID. So uh, obviously I don't have to uh, kind of go into too much about the incredible and uh, you know obviously challenging impact that it's had on healthcare within our area as well within Ontario at large. Uh, but one of the things that Stevenson is very proud to be able to offer uh, our area is we do have uh, an assessment center, a drive-through assessment center right at the hospital. So uh, it actually operates three days a week and we expanded it to, to four just because of the need of, um, you know, obviously we're, we're in the, the depths of the, the second wave right now. So we have been providing uh, testing for people within the community, as well as long-term care homes also. So retirement homes, long-term care home within our area, we've been able to provide uh, testing support um, as well as just general support uh, for you know, outbreaks and things like that that have happened, as well as with schools too. Uh, so obviously schools have been impacted by the outbreaks. And, and so, you know, we're, we're able to, to do everything that we can to be able to uh, provide uh, fast, effective testing so that we, we can kind of get our arms wrapped around any situations that are happening in the community. So that is a, a huge, um, I guess, service that we really stress uh, that's there uh, for our community. Um, and that uh, is really shows the importance of having local health care available um, when something like this happens, uh, like COVID. Okay, next slide. So one thing, so this also kind of ties into to COVID, uh, but it, it does have a, a bit more of a, a positive uh, angle to it, is we have actually just finished renovation on our brand new level two ICU. Uh, and we just had our virtual opening of the, the new department yesterday. So we're, we're very excited by this. Um, so it's an addition of four ICU beds to the hospital. And this will help with, with COVID as well, too. Um, obviously, ICU beds are, are kind of a, a cherished uh, space. Uh, within any hospital at this point in time, but it also helps uh, even outside of COVID. It's just providing uh, our ability to be able to provide critical care uh, to people in our community. So in the past, we've had to uh, transfer patients to other hospitals. So we would maybe have to transfer uh, patients to South Lake or to Toronto, uh, depending on the situation. And with our new ICU, we're actually able to, to treat people who have um, a higher care needs right within our community. So, so that's just a, another great uh, example of the importance of having community care close to home. So you are able to, to stay within your, your area. So, and we also have uh, the addition of a, a respiratory therapist as well too. Uh, so obviously that's a uh, very important for, for COVID, but also just for, for general um, high care uh, outside of COVID or when things go, you know, hopefully back to, to normal. So uh, we're very proud of this. Uh, the team worked very hard to be able to, to make this happen in such a timely manner as well, because obviously the, the need is extremely high at this moment in time. So we're very excited to, to have this uh, just open and uh, hopefully be, well, I guess not hopefully, but it is there to start accepting patients uh, very soon. 
Uh, next slide. And hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm kind of moving through a lot of details and a lot of information, but uh, I'll ask questions at the end as well. So if anybody does have any questions, you know, by all means, jot it down and I'm happy to, to answer at the end. Uh, so now I, I'm kind of switching gears into our redevelopment of the hospital. And this is uh, something that uh, I've been working very closely on and we've been working on for, um, uh, for quite some time now. And uh, we are championing within our area uh, to actually have a redeveloped hospital. So uh, I've listed just a couple of uh, things here. So a new de emergency department, state-of-the-art uh, OR facilities, as well as we'd have uh, extensive diagnostic imaging and laboratory. So that's like x-rays, ultrasounds, uh, blood work, that sort of thing, as well as outpatient uh, clinics also. So that uh, again goes with the dialysis and the fracture clinics and physiotherapy. And that uh, kind of just encompasses a, a broader scope of patient care that we can offer within the community. So we're really working hard to, to um, move our redevelopment campaign further uh, to be able to, to really provide uh, a higher uh, level of care uh, within our, our area. So, yeah. Um, and, oh, just to kind of go through, um, you know, some of the details, I, I think on the next slide. There we go. <laughs> So just to kind of set the, the groundwork for what we are currently working with or what our, our hospital staff are working with, I should say, is we were originally built in 1964, the, the current building that is there, if you can uh, believe it. And it was originally built um, with just the uh, capabilities to be able to serve 7,000 patients within our ER. And right now uh, we are actually serving uh, almost 40,000. So as you can imagine, that's an enormous jump uh, from 7,000 back in 1964 to now uh, nearly 40,000 patients uh, just through the ER alone uh, every year. So it really becomes very uh, quickly aware uh, just how big the need is uh, for a redeveloped hospital and how we've uh, outgrown our space. And as our, our area continues to, to grow and grow exponentially every year with more and more people coming into the area uh, and families growing, you know, obviously we, there's a, a great need there and uh, we really try to be able to, to serve everyone in our community as best as possible. So, uh, oh, just next slide, sorry. This is a picture of, uh, or two pictures I should say, of uh, kind of the, the mock-up of what the new hospital would uh, potentially look like. So this is uh, kind of the aspirational look of what uh, we are striving to achieve. And fingers crossed, I think we're, we're getting there, that's for sure. So, and again, this is just to, to kind of give you an overview of the things that we would be looking at with the, the new hospital. So it would be a two-story design. Uh, it's a, a wraparound, a, a kind of a combination of old building that has been renovated as well as brand new building. Uh, we would keep uh, the helipad. So the helipad, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen any of the, the helicopters come through. But that is uh, something that is uh, very, very crucial to us to, to keep within the, the plans of a redeveloped hospital, because for any of the patients who um, need to be transferred to another location because of their, uh, you know, maybe it's injuries from car accidents or, or what have you, um, we need to be able to transfer people uh, in a very quick manner. So we do actually have um, uh, helicopter capabilities right now. So we do have an uh, orange helicopter that uh, comes in to be able to transfer patients. So that is uh, very critical within our area or very critical to keep within our area uh, because obviously uh, it is a bit of a, a distance drive to be able to, to get some other to other facilities as well. So, and then things that aren't very glamorous, but are, are very important, things like parking. <laughs> I know that that's not something that everybody thinks of when you think of a, a redeveloped hospital as being something that's incredibly important, but anybody who has had to uh, come to the hospital, uh, parking has been a big challenge. So obviously, uh, as I mentioned, we were originally only built to, to serve 7,000 people, and uh, now we're at 40, nearly 40,000. So as you can imagine, 
each of those people have to park and uh, we, we are just running out of space all around. So uh, we're looking to increase the, the square footage, we're looking to increase parking uh, and really to, to preserve the things that are working for us like the helicopter pad. Next slide. So, uh, so even though, so this is one thing that we're actually, we're very proud of. Uh, so even though we are working with uh, a building structure that we have outgrown um, and that is uh, very tired to say the, the least, we are still ranking as uh, one of the top hospitals for the fastest uh, wait time for the emergency department in all of Ontario. So that is uh, just a testament to uh, the team and the doctors and the nurses and the staff that are at the hospital uh, that we are able to, to work within uh, the building that we have and we're kind of making do. <laughs> um, but we, we are able to maintain that we have some of the fastest wait times uh, in the province, which, which is uh, just an incredible feat. But we are hitting the point where we basically uh, need to be able to redevelop and revitalize and kind of rethink how we're doing things so that we can keep doing that. And so that's uh, the more that our area grows, obviously the strain uh, increases on our, our staff team. So really it kind of works with uh, our hand in hand to be able to continue to serve as best as possible. Uh, we need to be able to, to have a revitalized space to be able to, to do that. Okay, next slide. So this is the this is kind of where the the foundation comes in. Uh, so this is our because of you we can campaign that we launched uh, back uh, in October two years ago now. Uh, so this is a forty three million dollar uh, campaign that we were working on of that forty three million dollars, and it sounds like an enormous number, but. We are uh, actually making a, a pretty good dent in it uh, or at it uh, already. So what is included within that $43 million capital campaign is the $30 million that we need to raise for the redeveloped hospital. In addition to that, we also have other things that we raise at the, or that we are looking to raise funds for at the same time. So um, you may not be aware, and we, we, uh, we kind of um, are a bit lucky and a bit fortunate um, that we live in Canada where we do have a, a healthcare system, uh, but we also kind of don't think about uh, how the, the hospitals, you know, operate and how is it possible that when we need care, we're able to, to go to the facilities to receive that. And we actually have to raise money to make that happen. So things like equipment, so stretchers, defibrillators, um, everything from surgical equipment, ultrasound machines, anything that you can think of, all of the equipment that is needed within the hospital, we actually have to raise funds for. Um, and obviously we have to replace those uh, year after year as well. And uh, information technology is another big thing as well. So as you can see, we have $5 million that we're raising for a uh, health information system, which we call HIS. And that's basically a, uh, it's to move us from a paper-based system into a technology-based system so that we are connected with other hospitals like Southlake and Markham Stouffville so that if a patient is coming into our doors and they're uh, then transferred to Southlake, uh, they literally had to actually take their physical paperwork with them, the hard copies. <laughs> And we're looking to, uh, or we have successfully moved at removing that so that all of the files are electronic and move with the patient as they move from one hospital to the other hospital. So uh, all of that kind of adds up to that $43 million, which uh, we are very proud to say that we've actually raised uh, just over 50% of that already. So we're really making some great uh, headway and we're really uh, kind of moving through the campaign. And that, that's from the incredible community support that we've been re receiving. Uh, next slide. So again, just to kind of reiterate the point of that we've just been receiving so much community support. Um, you know, everyone has uh, started to get behind the campaign, whether it's, you know, things like lemon, everything from like lemonade stands and bake sales to uh, large corporate donors and individual gifts of every size. And so it's really a, uh, a full team effort and uh, something like this 
that uh, is such a large project in, in scope uh, does require kind of everyone in the community to, to do what they can and to, to really get behind it to, to support it. Next slide. So, and this is, uh, I just put kind of a few points here just about like ways that uh, you can help or that uh, you know, your friends and family can help as well too. And uh, what we wanted to, I guess, uh, present to the this committee is uh, just, we need help raising awareness and, and really getting the, the message out there and uh, spreading things through social media. We do have hashtags that we use. We use Transforming Stevenson and because of you, we can. Uh, and we're just trying to get the word out as much as possible because everybody who, who knows or who um, has had to use our services uh, in the past or has a family member who has had to really uh, can see, um, you know, the need as well as the importance of having the, the hospital with, within our community as well. So, and we encourage people to fundraise and to, um, you know, whether it's participating in some of our events that we have uh, going on as well too. I know it's a little, it's a little bit of a weird time now for events. Uh, traditionally, we have uh, quite a number of campaigns and events that happen, you know, within the community, uh, big and small. And we've actually been moving a lot of those campaigns over to, to the virtual world. So we do have uh, a campaign that's coming up. This is a bit of a teaser, but uh, we have a, an event that's coming up in June uh, and it's a partnership with the Gibson Center. So we are doing Raise Your Voice and it's for, for care and um, for care and culture within our community. And so it's a partnership of arts as well as health uh, coming together to do a singing competition as well as a virtual concert. And it's to raise funds for, for both uh, the hospital as well as the Gibson Center. So that's a, a really cool event that's coming up. Um, as well as, you know, adding charitable components to, um, you know, family get togethers that I, I know we're all are kind of doing virtual right now, but uh, hopefully down the line, we'll be able to return to, you know, regular birthday parties and uh, holiday events and that sort of thing. Uh, but it, it's definitely um, something that can enhance, you know, even virtual, if you're getting together with your family virtually, instead of having, you know, Christmas gifts, maybe people uh, are able to, to make donations uh, to support the hospital. Um, and then obviously, we have a, a number of things like fitness challenges people have done and uh, individual fundraising and uh, really the, the sky's the limit on uh, the different uh, ideas and things that, that um, you know, individuals and students and groups uh, can kind of come together to, to do for the hospital as well. And, and again, it's just about, uh, you know, inspiring people to be passionate about healthcare and the importance of healthcare uh, within the community um, and to get the, the message out uh, to friends and family and to your, your fellow students as well. So next slide. And this is just to say thank you. <laughs> so we just are, you know, it's been a very uh, trying time within healthcare and, um, you know, we've, you know, we're continuing to be a trying time for healthcare. We've had a lot of ups and downs and, you know, we're continuing to, to fight through COVID, but we've had so much community support, and particularly over the last, uh, you know, 10 to, uh, I guess that we're coming up on a year now soon, once we hit March, and we've received so much outpouring of love and support from the community, you know, not just through donations, but through, you know, letters and messages and, um, you know, meals for staff and uh, painted rocks and just messages of hope that really go a long way to, to help um, boost morale uh, with the, the staff and with all of our physicians and nurses. So, you know, we just want Every time I, I speak to anybody, we just want to really say thank you for, for everything that uh, everyone does. And I think the last slide, there we go. <laughs> just a nice little hug emoji. <laughs> um, and also too, we have our uh, websites as well. So both the hospital as well as the foundation have uh, websites. We also have social media pages too. 
So we have all of our uh, resources are, are posted up on both the websites as well as the, the social media pages. So you can see anything that, that's happening, um, particularly if you're looking to, to get involved. We have um, events that are posted up on our page. So that's the Transforming Stevenson uh, website. We also have a, a platform as well too that does individual fundraising pages also. So that's a, a really great uh, tool. And we have that ac accessible right through our website as well. So we have, um, we're able to, if uh, individuals would like to fundraise within uh, the community, we are able to create fundraising pages and then connect that to our website. So that gives people a really good resource so that they can be able to, to share the information out to their networks within the community as well. So we've kind of got uh, a comprehensive view if anyone's ever looking for information or if you um, you know, want to, to see what's going on, those are the, the best places to, to see as well as the redevelopment campaign also too. So if you're interested of what the latest is and what's uh, happening at the hospital, then definitely the website is the place to, to check out. So yeah, so I don't know if anyone has any questions. It was a lot of information. Hopefully I, I didn't go too overboard. <laughs> if anybody has any questions, just hold up either your yes card or your request to speak card. Or if you don't have a card, you could just raise your hand and Pam can notice you. No questions. I need to get those cards for our meetings at the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> Sydney, you go ahead. I have a question, but I'll save it to the end. Okay, so to donate, we can just go on the website and we can find those resources there, right? Correct. So, uh, so you have a couple options. You can just uh, go to the website and we will have for Raise Your Voice. Uh, we don't have information up there yet. So that's going to be uh, launched um, hopefully in February, maybe mid-February, I would say. Um, so that should be up there soon. Uh, but then also, too, if anyone has any questions about uh, fundraising and that sort of thing, um, you can uh, contact myself. Uh, I can pass along my contact information uh, to Councillor Beatty. Um, you can reach through him um, or come to us directly, uh, whichever uh, you would prefer. And we can assist, uh, you know, if you are looking at doing a, a campaign, we are able to, to provide additional resources as well, too. Um, so that you can be able to, to share that within your networks. Or if you're looking for, you know, creation of a fundraising page, or there's something on social media that you want to check out, then by all means, you can uh, reach out to us as well too through that. I have one more question. So <laughs> with like the new redevelopment plan, what is something that would really like, um, like stick out to youth that they can really connect with? when it comes to like um, advertising or like getting the word out about the new redevelopment? Because I, you know, I want to yeah. share this with other youth and I want to do it in a way where they feel like they have a connection to it and something more personal. So is there anything that they could connect to possibly? I would say mental health. Uh, so currently, um, I don't know if anybody has checked out the the physical layout of the hospital, but the, right now um, we have the Mary McGill Center is actually in a uh, separate building outside of the hospital and we provide our mental health services uh, within that uh, building. And the building is, I think, older than 1964 and uh, it definitely, it, I wouldn't say that it's the, the best place uh, to be able to, to foster that, that nursing environment uh, that really is key to, um, you know, encouraging strong mental health. So we're very excited to be able to, to kind of redo that whole area and be able to, to move that uh, into a space that also has, you know, privacy, ensures, uh, you know, patient uh, safety as well too. So that's a, a big area. And, and I can provide some additional resources or some additional uh, information um, on our plans for the redevelopment for mental health as well, too. I don't have them handy tonight, but I can provide that as a follow-up as well. Yeah, that would be great if we can get those resources for that, because that is a big issue within the year. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. And I think COVID has really, I, I mean, 
we were talking about mental health uh, long before COVID, but uh, I think COVID has, you know, really put a strain on uh, from everyone's mental health, really. Uh, but definitely youth uh, are taking a, a big, uh, the brunt of, of that. So, you know, this would uh, really help, I think, our community to be able to get those mental health services out to, you know, youth and to, to adults as well, um, but to everybody who, who really needs that support. Great, that sounds exciting. I think Matthew has a question now. Matthew, you can go ahead. Thank you. So I know you talked about how to get like students connected to like, mental health, but is there certain ways that you wanna like attract to students like through schools and like events and stuff like that, et cetera? Yes, so we are looking at, um, we're actually just in the planning stages right now of a full program that we're looking to roll out to schools. Um, so we're actually looking to roll out that program. I think it's going to be probably fall, just given the, the situation uh, with, um, with COVID. So, uh, but we are looking at uh, rolling out like a full comprehensive uh, platform that would uh, basically reach out to all the schools within our area, as well as students to encourage and provide resources. So there, there are going to be additional resources, uh, more like a toolkit that's going to be prepared um, as well as some videos too that we're hoping uh, to develop within the next coming months. So I'm happy to uh, share that with or keep this group updated on uh, the progress that we're making within that. Uh, we're just starting to put those plans into place now um, and hopefully for, uh, I would say probably a fall uh, 2021 rollout, that's the, the goal. So if that's okay with the committee, I'd love to be able to, to share the, the progress on that um, as we kind of move more, uh, getting some more concrete uh, plans in place. Yeah, I think that would be good for us to see how like it's going and stuff like that. That would be very appreciated. Absolutely. If there are no other questions, Madam Chair, <clears throat> through you, I'll ask a couple. Um, Elise, mm -hmm. you mentioned mental health outpatient programs and how it's being moved from the Mary McGill. And if anybody doesn't know the Mary McGill Center, it's the old house up on the hill by the hospital. And if you can imagine going to see a doctor or a counselor in an old century house, that's sort of what it's like. So it's not, not uh, I guess you sort of don't want a clinical environment, but you do want privacy and you do want um, a more modern space. So are there any plans within the redeveloped hospital or the redeveloped portion for any like youth specific or children specific areas or programming or anything like that? that targeted specifically uh you know what that's a good question i'm not sure exact layout and it might be that we don't have it completely laid out yet but you know what i'll follow up and i'll i'll if i could get that back to the committee that would be great because i know that that's something that's very um close to our ceo's heart is to be able to to really provide an enhanced mental health program and i know that just the the physical constraints of the current building um, have kind of prevented some of that as well. I mean, they're still uh, providing services and we still have, um, you know, we're, we're able to see patients, uh, but it's not the ideal situation. So I know that they are definitely working on it, but I don't know the specific specifics of like how the uh, program would be physically uh, laid out within the building. But you know what, if I could get that back to the group, that would be great. Absolutely. And are there, any, are there any plans to engage the community or community groups or organizations on any of the beautification projects or anything like that, um, like with uh, art installations or anything like that? Because I think in a lot of our municipal spaces, we put up a lot of art through the South Central Arts Council and Gibson Center, things like that. And I was just thinking, you know, whenever you're building a new hospital, um, thinking of murals and putting in things that, yes. that mark the history and the heritage of the bill of the, the town and the building itself. Like um, those are the kinds of projects you really want to engage community groups and community members on. So I would just throw that out to maybe the board that uh, if there's anything that is, you know, youth specific or youth centric that um, they had in mind. Um, I think that 
this group could certainly play a role in in um, in an advisor for an advisory capacity for sure. Um, That's just a one more. fantastic idea. We have yeah. sorry just to to add to right. that because um, we so we have had uh, some volunteers come in uh, just to kind of paint the existing building that we have. But in those talks, we actually started having sort of preliminary talks around uh, the importance of art um, with uh, providing care. So definitely with patients uh, such as uh, patients who are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, there is a correlation between having, um, you know, specific uh, types of art within their uh, area and it's kind of to be submersed in something that, you know, so they don't just have kind of the, the blank walls type of thing that really um, makes an impact on their uh, cognitive abilities. So we have had kind of started having uh, preliminary conversations uh, through the original uh, painting of the, uh, just the physical walls that we have. So we did have volunteer teams, uh, corporate volunteer teams come in to, to do that. Uh, but I wouldn't say it was uh, art, at that point. However, I think that's a fantastic idea. And I think that I couldn't imagine uh, anyone having a problem with any of that. And I, I'm mm -hmm. willing to bet that we would probably love that. So I would, I'll bring that to the people who I need to bring that to. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it might be one of those things that we might be uh, a bit, um, you know, before uh we, cause I guess step one is, uh, to be able to, to get to the place where we have a, a, um, redeveloped building that we're in a position where we're physically building it. And then that would be when we would have those conversations. But I think that, I think that's a fantastic idea. Yes. Yeah. Or even, uh, just discussions on, you know, providing that space and what that space mm -hmm. looks like and what's in it and who's in it and things like that. Um, just Absolutely. one last question. And, and sure. it was, about your um, your event coming up in June, mm -hmm. it caught my interest because uh, Sydney and Mateus will remember, and Pam will remember as well. During the last term of council, we had a we had a small event at the Gibson Center, and it was mm -hmm. basically an opportunity for uh, youth and new to to showcase their talent. And we had us in the Mercer Pub down in the basement of the Gibson Center. And uh, I think we planned on maybe having a few for, and we did the auditions and it was a full three hours. Everybody had a really good time and, and it was a really, really good turnout. And it was a good opportunity for a lot of um, the people that are up and coming because there's a lot of talented youth in terms of artists and singers and composers and stuff. So. Um, it was great. So that caught my interest. If you're, if you're planning something like that, obviously not in a pandemic, but um, that's something that um, sort of ties in with the hospital as well as arts and culture and trying to bring youth into that foray as well. So I thought you guys may be interested in that one. And I made a note to myself to be able to, to fly it because I do remember that you guys had a, a lot of success with that um, event and and uh, we're, we're kind of looking to do, um, I guess, because unfortunately it's going to have to be completely virtual. So uh, we've been able to sort of adapt our original concept that we had been talking with the Gibson Center uh, with doing a concert into the, a virtual uh, format. So, um, and then we added uh, with the, the virtual world that we're all living in, we've added a, uh, a sort of contest component to it as well. And so the preliminary idea um, is that uh, it, the first part of it is we would be looking for submissions. So um, from, uh, you know, groups such as yourselves, uh, if anybody is interested in, um, you know, putting in a submission to maybe just kind of start thinking a little bit about it, uh, because we'd be looking for submissions um, of our original work. Um, and then we'll also have judges uh, who are kind of picking uh, maybe the top three. And those top three will have the, the opportunity to be able to, to perform, uh, albeit virtually, but uh, they would be performing uh, on the night of the, the concert, which is June 3rd. And then we also have a, a lineup of performers as well, too, that the Gibson Center is securing for uh, our uh, event. And so they'd be able to, to kind of have like a, a platform to be able to, to showcase their uh, talents and their, their work. 
Um, so it, it should be a, a very exciting event. Um, and then obviously we're selling tickets and sponsorship and, and things like that uh, with it as well. But it, it's a very exciting uh, event for anybody who is looking to uh, kind of get their, their work or their uh, talent out uh, to the community. Um, and so, yeah, so I'd be, I'd love to be able to, to share. Uh, we've got, I think probably within the next three weeks, I'm going to say, we'll have um, a full release of information about that event. Uh, so I'd love to be able to share it with uh, this group because I know that this group is a very talented group um, and you, some of people would probably love to, to take part in it. So uh, we would definitely love uh, participation in it. And, and again, all of the the funds are supporting uh, art as well as uh, healthcare. So again, this kind of actually goes back to what we're talking about art and uh, the correlation between art and health. Um, and so we really wanted to, to create that partnership to be able to, to show that connection. Well, just for timing purposes, like our next meeting will probably be, I would say four weeks from now. So if you're meeting with them within three weeks, perhaps it would be appropriate if members of the committee agree to have uh, Elise back at our next meeting, which would be four sure. weeks or five weeks from now so that um, we could get an update and see where we could go from there. Absolutely. Are there any other questions for Elise before we move on to the next item? If there aren't, Elise, thank you very much on behalf of the committee for coming tonight. It's nice to see you again. And we'll look forward to seeing you again at uh, the next meeting. And we'll look forward to working with you in the Gibson Center. Sounds like an exciting opportunity. Great, thank you so much. Well, thank you Great. guys for having me. Thank you. And thank with you. that, Madam Chair, I'll move the motion to receive Elise's deputation if someone will second it. Someone needs to second it. <laughs> Seconded by France, there we go. All in favor? You got to vote too. Carried. Thanks. Thanks very much, Elise. Back to you, Sydney. Okay. So on to our second item on deputations and presentations. We have a presentation from Joseph Chamberlain on the All Wheels Park update. Okay. So handing that over to you, Officer Chamberlain. All right, thank you very much for having me for a second time. Uh, I'm glad to be back before you and hopefully with COVID ending uh, in the next six months to a year, we can get back on uh, track with this project, the All Wheels Legacy Project. Um, obviously we got caught uh, with COVID and uh, we stopped all local fundraising immediately just because of the financial repercussions in town, but that hasn't stopped us completely uh, from some of the bigger projects we had uh, behind the scenes. I've also worked uh, quite extensively with our youth committee uh, co-chairs, Brinley and Levi. And uh, we have made plans moving forward. We're literally waiting for COVID to end. Um, we have a massive youth initiative, social media platform, uh, paper media, uh, ready to roll out. And I'm excited about it, but I'm, uh, I'm, hesitant now to release anything because of the COVID scenario we're stuck in here. Um, I believe my co-chairs are wa watching on YouTube tonight. I have requested multiple students to log on. Uh, I may even have one of our youth leaders from St. Paul's on tonight, uh, Nalani. So a uh, shout out to all of them. Um, basically what I'm willing to you know, I'm looking for the, the advisory committee to continue talking to the council members of New Tecumseh. Uh, I know we have Mr. Beatty here and we have support from him. Um, all the council members need to be spoken to uh, in regards to this youth project. It is, it is a huge project uh, just in the site alone, but then the benefits once the site is completed. I know this committee is interested in those items specifically, most likely. Um, yeah. Uh, it's the hospital is a great segue for me uh, <laughs> in regards to the fracture clinic, but uh, obviously skateboarding, bicycling, uh, the all wheels, wheelchair athletes would be using this facility, uh, mental health benefits to the physical 
um, well-being of the kids outside the social um, presence that will be there. You might not be an athlete. You might not want to take part in that, but the social aspect will be there. Uh, I've had some contingencies in regards to safety. Some kids have asked me to put cameras into these locations, which I would like to do with a, a Wi-Fi component. So it opens the door to more children using the location. Uh, the volunteer program I have uh, set in place. Uh, basically, I, I spoke about it at the first meeting with the advisory committee that uh, youth between the ages of five and 12 will be provided free lessons. Um, the mentors will be the high school kids um, who typically might not want to work their 40 hours of volunteer and some of the typical things you might think of, but uh, thinking outside the box, um, I have a lot of interest in uh, high school children mentoring younger youth, uh, obviously screened by myself and the OPP, uh, so they can be in those roles offering uh, different types of programs. I've also thought of strictly females, um, having a female instructors coming in to teach female students who may not be comfortable with other male uh, participants. So there's a lot, there's a lot on the website. It is there. Um, basically when we reemerge from COVID, we will start pushing via social media. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook, which children don't look at, but we are there for the adult components, which are helping us and the fundraising ability. Um, yeah, we're, unfortunately we're stuck with COVID. Um, some of the things, larger development for the youth community to be aware of, um, we are reaching out to loc uh, local developers in the area. So obviously uh, large amounts of money could potentially be uh, provided by them. Also looking at Honda Canada, La Forge Canada. Um, we are with La Forge. We are looking for in-kind donations. Obviously, concrete and this type of thing is our number one expense. Uh, so they would be uh, a massive ordeal for us to uh, get an in-kind donation or at cost um, donation from them. So these are things uh, myself and a newly formed uh, adult committee that's working. We're working on these types of things. Uh, the youth committee specifically, I basically, what we've done, we have one project each month we would like to complete. This is to, yes, raise some funds, but more importantly, keep us in the media eye, be youth led, and uh, just keep us in the forefront and keep us uh, in the current, I guess is what you want to say. We want to be active on uh, instant Instagram and social media. We, I know being a high school officer and a youth officer that uh, children and youth live on their phones for the most part, uh, not the most healthy thing, but then that's why the skate park, the all wheel skate park will be there for them. I believe if we um, uh, emerge from COVID in the spring, uh, one of our first events uh, that we will push uh, is a t-shirt sales. Okay, we're gonna have a uh, local youth design uh, or have a competition and design a shirt, produce those shirts, and then sell them uh, for a small profit to go towards uh, the project. The next uh, event, which would be a lot of fun, is an all wheels ride through Alliston. So to really uh, push with the OPP, obviously helping with uh, traffic control and push um, that bicycles, wheelchairs, scooters, um, rollerblades, are all involved and have those children uh, in the community. I believe through our 19 feeder schools and three high, high schools, we can have a massive turnout um, in that type of thing and also sell t-shirts. Uh, so it's the support starts to gain momentum. Um, and at those times the social media presence hopefully will gain uh, speed for us and push forward, pushing then to the larger uh, corporate uh, donations that we're looking for and trying to show why um, them partnering with us would be a benefit to their company because at the end of the day that's what uh, sometimes that's what they're looking for so um, I wish I had more of an update for you I would like to come back before you once COVID is resolved and we're pushing forward if you know of someone I know uh, you guys are uh, uh, very involved in the community. If you know someone that would be involved in this out of the box thinking or in regards to skateboarding, rollerblading, scootering, and I know everybody knows somebody, we're fully looking for those youth to engage with us. 
and there's a lot of different things they can do between the 12 projects we have once we start we have 12 projects planned uh, small in nature some of them some of them are bigger but we can definitely find a role for every child uh, or youth uh, to be involved and uh, do their little part for the all wheels legacy project and for the older kids i try to explain it to them i know you're not thinking about it now this park will be here for 40 years your children and your grandchildren will use this park. Um, Mr. Beatty, uh, France and I will be long gone and this park will still be there uh, for youth to enjoy. And uh, Stevens Memorial Hospital will be there and it's gonna be an amazing spot at Riverdale Park. Uh, I'll leave it. I know there's probably lots of questions. I'm totally willing to answer anything that uh, is required of me. Uh, I look forward to working with you guys uh, once this COVID's completed and out of the way. Madam Chair, if I could, before there are any questions, I'll just, uh, for the benefit of the members that weren't part of the last uh, uh, meeting and where we left off, Officer Chamberlain is, is leading a, sort of a task force of his own uh, to build an all-wheel skate park in Allison. I'm sure you're all familiar with what those look like. They're the big concrete bowls. Um, and I can tell you that there is, he, Officer Chamberlain and his co-chairs presented to council several months ago. And uh, I can tell you that there was consensus. I believe it was unanimous. I'm going from memory, but there was at least consensus. I think it was unanimous. Uh, that uh, there was support from council to do a project like this. So before I throw it over to members of the committee, Officer Chamberlain, where are you at in your fundraising goal around like? Uh, from the town council meetings, obviously we were matched uh, for $100,000 from the town of New Tecumseh. Um, Engineering costs at a cost of $67,000 were uh, all put into last year's budget. Mm -hmm. um, through our local community fundraising, before we stopped it, um, we were literally only at the west side of Alliston uh, coming across town, business by business. I think we're around approximately $6,000. Um, we have some assurances from the Alliston fire uh, that I believe it was 16,000 was offered up. Um, I did receive some other funding, probably at approximately $5,000. Uh, Everything is held in trust by the OPP Youth Foundation for me. I am uh, going to get those figures for my adult committee uh, that I'm meeting with. And uh, I will, next time I present to you, I can have a strong figure uh, moving forward and where we're at. Sure, and and when we have you back, well, if you want to bring some uh, a presentation of some specs and designs and whatnot, we can take a look at those as well. I'll throw it open to members of the committee for questions. Thanks, Sydney. Okay, so Matthew, you can go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. So you were talking about those certain like objectives or like plans for like once every month for your committee. What exactly are those when it gets approved? Like in what are they? Because maybe some of those we can possibly help you out with completing. Absolutely. So uh, I have a list in front of me. Uh, T-shirt sales was one. So uh, there's an art component to that. What I was going to use was uh, some students at Banting Memorial to create the design uh, in partnership with the two co-chairs I have. Both are Banting students now, uh, one in grade 12, one in grade nine. Um, I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm not a skateboarder. I'm more into dirt bikes and BMXing. So I'm kind of letting the, the youth co-chair, this is a youth uh, initiative, do that. Um, some of the other ideas, the all wheels ride through town. Um, we were hoping to do a polar bear swim at Earl Row. Obviously, COVID kind of st is stopping us now. Maybe we can do something funny and online to try to generate uh, some media on Instagram, uh, get some buzz to get us back to the GoFundMe. Um, the biggest, I have a huge project, and it's for kids between 
uh, grades six and eight, um, I have volunteer cards. Basically what they would do is take that card to a neighbor or a grandparent. They would say, I'm gonna, I would like to shovel your leaves or shovel your driveway or do any kind of project for you. There's a six step process on how that grandparent or parent can directly uh, provide those, that $5 or $10 back to the all wheels project to get the grade six through grade eight involved. Um, that's, that's a big one that I'm ready to roll out. I have everything in my, uh, in my office ready to go. Obviously COVID stopped that. Um, we also have a charity run that we'd like to do through Allison. So that's a quite common one that would be easy to do, pick our route. Um, obviously we have the full support of the OPP chain of command um, that would be no cost to us. And then I also, uh, for students at all three uh, local high schools, I have a hockey tournament um, that's planned and ready to go. Uh, simply would be the high school teams being uh, brought in and then fill the stands and try to raise money. Um, other, We have 12 initiatives. There's lots of little ones. There's a bake sale. I know that's not a huge thing, but it gets you in the paper. You can do it in a, a February or March timeframe when the weather might not be very nice. Uh, so we've thought up of smaller one day projects uh, that would be very easy to um, plan and implement uh, within the three high schools and or the 19 feeder schools we have. So we do have access into all schools because of uh, myself being a high school resource officer and youth officer. So um, yeah, there's a lot of different things and anyone that you can think of can absolutely get involved. Yeah, perfect. Cause some of those things we can probably definitely help contribute. Obviously COVID has definitely been a massive impact for every single like idea that any of us have had, but that's definitely something that will definitely, we can probably help you out with because those are ideas that would definitely help generate like publicity for the park and get everyone in the community part of it. So I think that would definitely be something that we can do. All right. Thank you, Matthew, for that question. I have a question of my own. But I'll throw it over to Mateus first. Mateus, you can ask Officer Chamberlain your question. Hey, um, I was just wondering if the OPP Youth Committee Fund was a registered charity or not. It is a registered charity. Uh, we do have a C, uh, is it C-A-R number. I'm not sure it says C number. So I do have that number. Uh, anyone that donates would be provided a tax receipt. Um, on the website, we have the allwheelslegacyproject.com. Uh, it fully explains two ways to donate. You can donate through a GoFundMe uh, component, uh, which they obviously take their cut, um, or you can directly uh, come through the Youth Foundation, uh, bypass the GoFundMe, and uh, do it that way. You'll, either way, you will receive a receipt and uh we explain that to any corporate partner or uh, any youth uh, or any, any actually anyone that goes through, we will have those sent out through the Youth Foundation. All right, thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, thanks, Matthias, for that question. Does anyone else have any questions for Officer Chamberlain? All right, so I'll go ahead and ask mine. Um, since I've been on this committee, uh, people have always asked me, are we going to get like a skate park in Allison? When is this coming? And I know that you mentioned that we should share and like ask other people if they're interested in this. So what is the Instagram handle so that all the committee members could share it on their social medias and get it out to people? So people know that it's happening. This is what's going on and to see if they're interested. All right, so our Insta our Facebook is the All Wheels Park for Facebook. I know some of the older people have that. In regards to Instagram, it is the Alliston. I'm going to bring it up on mine because I want to make sure it's correct for you. Doesn't want to load my results.
It should be the out. I don't have it on my phone. It's not coming up because the OPP office is horrible for Wi-Fi, but it is the, I believe it's the Alliston Legacy Park. It should be linked over on the Facebook page or off of our website, the All Wheels Legacy Project. Uh, Brenly Dubois, grade 12 student, is running uh, those two social media accounts for myself. Uh, I, I'm currently running um, the website, but it is being passed over to a young man named Miles, who is a co-op OPP uh, student here. He's been accepted to Ottawa uh, University next year, but he is going to help us and take over the website for me because he is extremely tech savvy. So uh, youth is being engaged at uh, every portal and moving forward, they, they will have uh, the majority of tasks within this. Uh, I will simply be a mentor and overseer and uh, the go between uh, the OPP Youth Foundation and town council or committee members if need be. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that is perfect because there's obviously a need for this and a want actually. So we just want to make sure that people know that it's actually happening and that they can be involved. So um, I would love that all the committee members go ahead and promote that. And can I get, um, is it from France? France, do you have a question? Okay, France, go ahead. Actually, I just looked up on Instagram and it is all underscore wheels underscore park. Okay, thank you so much, Franz. That is great. Okay, so is there any other questions before we go ahead and motion the presentation? I don't think we see any there, Madam Chair. So uh, before I move the motion, Officer Chamberlain, thanks again for taking the time to come and join us tonight. And uh, in the meantime, I'll follow up with Parks and Rec staff and see uh, where we've left off and where we can take things up once COVID-19 restrictions allow us to move forward with some we can, you know, if we, if we can't get to construction anytime soon this year, hopefully we can get all the way up to construction so that next year we can actually build it because this term will, this, the term of this committee will end next year, end of 2022. So it would be really nice to uh, have it built and if not have a date for the shovels to be in the ground. So um, I will follow up with Parks and Rec staff and I'll be in touch and then uh, we can schedule uh, you to come back and appear before the committee and we'll go from there. Thanks again. Uh, I will move to uh, receive the deputation of Officer Chamberlain if somebody will second it. Seconded by Matthew. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Officer Chamberlain. Thank you very much for having me. Back to you, Madam Chair. Okay, and so We'll go next to item of new business. Um, and under that, we have the work, for, work plan for 2021 to 2022, community parks, transportation, and arts and culture. So where we left off with this at the last meeting, I, I believe uh, the takeaway or the quasi homework assignment between uh, the last meeting and now was to focus on what sorts of things you as committee members and as a group wanted to uh, work on and work toward both as a group and individually and how we and I can help you with that. So um, for the purposes of time, we've got another 20, 25 minutes or so. So I will turn it over to you, Sydney, and uh, I will just let this part of the discussion happen openly. If anybody wants to share what they thought about or what they worked on, by all means. Okay, so since the discussion, my mind has mainly been on transportation and uh, one other thing. Um, 
has anyone thought about what well, we can start with transportation if that's what you guys would like to do but my main thing is i wanted to look at stops and where we could have stops that are accessible for youth um mainly at schools and in really high populated areas for example treetops where can we connect youth and make it more accessible and i see uh, matthew has his hand raised so you can go ahead and yeah, I was thinking mainly the same because that's what I've been thinking is because I know they have the bus out of Bradford and stuff like that, but there isn't really any other stops. There's a couple here and there, but I think if the uh, communication and transportation is going to work, we're going to have to address the fact that we're going to need more stops, especially like what you were saying by schools. I think they'll have to get through to a lot because it make a lot easier to have everyone trying to go, example, like the rec center. You can have, like, example, all oh, one at St. Paul's, one at downtown, one in Madme, one in treetops, like those highly dense populations, right? So it would make communication and transportation a lot easier for, example, also older people as well, because you don't expect a 90-year-old woman or even 60-year-old person just to walk all the way just to get, take a bus, right? So I think definitely as well getting into communication with some schools about transportation as well to make it uh, interconnectable between them would definitely be a smart idea for transportation for the town, as well as looking for, like I said, more stops like closer, like one in each ward possibly, or like one every main street or something like that to make it more accessible for not just students, but for everyone in the town as well. Yep, Matthew, I totally agree. Um, I know I've been looking at some of the routes recently and none of them directly stop at schools. They're like a little bit further out from the schools, but not at them. But every single time I see people come off the bus, it's always school kids and they have to walk and trek to those stops. So having it obviously more accessible to the people, the main demographics using them would be, which are youth and obviously other people, but mainly youth that are using them, I think would be ideal. And has any anyone else want to comment on the transportation or their thoughts? What do they think? Just before you move on from that one, Sydney, for the benefit of um, members that weren't part of the, the transportation coordinator uh, presented to this committee a long time ago, and he unveiled uh, the transportation master plan, which was worked on in the summer of 2019 as well. And uh, I know that it's a document that continues to be worked on. You see the buses probably going through. Has everybody seen the County of Simcoe buses going through the municipality from time to time? Okay. So that's, that's the, the starting block, if you will, of, of transportation. And what we need to do now as a town is, is figure out and implement transportation that will enhance what the county is providing. So the county provides that, uh, that bus, but it's one route. And it's not a, it's not a route that would, that would take you from stop to stop or from place to place. It's, it's, it's basically a commuter route. So there are a handful of stops in uh, Beaton and Alliston that would pick people up and it would just be a one-way route right to the Bradford GO station where people would transfer to commuter transit um, and, then, and then back home again. So it, that route is not, is not a, a transit route that, that is transit in the way you think it should be. With that in mind, these are the kinds of things and these are the kinds of conversations and recommendations that we need to think about whenever we implement transit because we will be purchasing or implement while well, we will be implementing a bus system we'll be purchasing um, buses over the next year or two so now's the time to figure out those so i can reach out to the transportation coordinator and ask him to uh, come back to the committee so that we can uh, learn as a group where they're at now. I know it was started a couple of years ago and I'm not sure where things have left off with COVID-19, but I can find that out. And then we can bring the transportation piece back to this committee and have a discussion about it at that time, if you like. Okay. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Even um, I do understand that it is a commuter route and that we can't necessarily do a lot of like sp- like stops within the um, within the town in, like um, of New Tecumseh. But I do think that one thing that I want to like vouch for is having it in like a highly like high um, a highly populated area like treetops. Treetops, you have a lot of people moving from the city and a lot of people from the city who would actually use those routes to commute to the city through the Bradford and GO station stops. So having it in a place like that where the people are going to use it and are usually go and um, commute between those areas, I think would be more effective. So I am looking forward to talk to um, talk to the transportation people when we have them. So definitely would want to voice that. Okay. All right, and any other, anything, would anyone like to add anything else to that or? All right. Before you move on, has anybody, has anybody actually ridden the bus here? I have not, no? Okay. I didn't think so. I didn't think a lot of you would be using commuter transit, but I wanted to ask anyway because um, it's it's a it's one of those things that uh, once you once you implement it, it only becomes more expensive, and it only becomes more of an operating cost and more of an insurance liability. And but with a growing community, um, we're at the point now where. We not only have to get people to work and to their places of um, where they need to be, but we need to be able to, as new Tecumseh grows, we need to be able to implement a transit system that connects the communities amongst themselves as well. So that's the role that uh, the town can play in enhancing what the County of Simcoe is building, for, uh, what is implemented for us so far for transit. Back to you, Sydney. Okay, so from the last time we met, have anyone thought of anything else that they really want to bring up in the committee and some new ideas? Yeah, Matthew, go ahead. Um, I don't know if this is another topic later because I don't have the agenda out in front of me at the second, but I remember Mr. B brought up about that new park that's being brought up. I don't know what it's called, sir, or where it's supposed to be, but I remember you asked about like certain ideas for the park and I have a couple of them. Uh, it was Faulkner Park. And uh, well, there's actually several being done this year. One is Faulkner Park and there's one uh, Patel Park as well. I don't have the exact location, but I could figure it out. But go ahead, Matthew. Okay, because I remember last time you wanted to like have certain ideas and make it kind of like separate or kind of I guess different from other parks and stuff like that so this was just me like I was asking like kind of some friends and some friends from like my classes in school and stuff like that I did like a little main thing say like um just random questions like what do you think would be good for like parks and stuff like that and a lot of them kind of and this is kind of interesting a lot of volleyball nets were kind of suggested like outdoor volleyball nets which be for me, I've seen, especially in my school, like St. Thomas Aquinas, like volleyball is a very popular sport now. It always has been, but now it's, it seems like it's been growing a lot in our schools. And I think since in Elson, we don't really have much outdoor volleyball nets. I think the closest ones I know is like in base Borden, I guess. They have them there, but I think it'd be good to at least have one or two here, have them in the summer and the spring, because it would get people together, obviously, obviously not now due to COVID, but I think it'd be a good idea having some to like bring people together and, and practice their serve spike sets and stuff like that and as well getting them more connected to a sport that is it's a fun sport to play and it's very good in general i'm not sure if they're still it once upon a time most of you probably weren't born <laughs> but uh next to the rotary pool there used to be a uh, a box of a large sandbox with the volleyball nets so there's certainly space to put things like that in, Matthew. I agree with you too. One of the things that, that I hear commonly is that not every kid in New Tecumseh plays hockey. Exactly. So with that in mind, okay, you don't want to play hockey. What do you want? And if it's things like volleyball nets, those are the kinds of things that we want to put in, right? Because I know that it is a big hockey town, but not everybody does play hockey. I was one of those kids that didn't play hockey. 
Well, another thing is like, I know that we recently added the basketball net behind the uh, new tech arena, which I've been there. I used to go there a lot in the summer before COVID and everything. And even during COVID, like I used to go by myself. It is, in my opinion, I think it's been a very good success. I, because every time I drive past there, I walk by, there's always people there. And there's always people using those nets. And I think it's a good communication, a good spot for everyone to hang out and meet. And I think that maybe we should do that in other spots as well, because I know we have a couple, we use some school ones, but example, on like treetops is a great example. A lot of people there, a lot of people don't have much rides to get to those arenas, right? Like you can't just get, a lot of us cannot just drive a car. We need like people to drive it and we don't have our G2s yet, most of us. So it's, we need to put in dense area, same as like Madame, like it's an older neighborhood, but there's stuff, but not everything there, right? And even areas downtown, right? Being able to put something in there, make a good spot for kids, especially now, like right now is like the most time of the month where everyone's having like, example, mental health has taken a big effect. Like they usually say third week is now, which I think this would also help benefit uh, physical health and mental health as well. If we had more of these sporting uh, recreational places around town. I agree with you. And we need to do a lot more of that. I think uh, Mayor Millen, uh, when he had his last uh, charity rodeo, um, he some of the funds that was raised from that rodeo was put towards putting those basketball nets in. And they were put in in Alliston, Beaton, and Tottenham. And so I know that uh, Mayor Millen is, is, uh, is very passionate about helping youth and, and advocating for youth causes and and programming. So um, I think that you've made, you've made some really good suggestions, Matthew, and I would encourage you to just um, continue to think about what are some of the other things that we can put in, in terms of, um, you know, not necessarily equipment, but what can we make out of space that kids really enjoy? Because that's a very simple, simple thing. That's just a box of sand and some nets, right? Like that's not a that's not a million dollar project. So if there's things like that that we can put, lots of things like that, those are the things that I would like to see for sure. Anybody else had anything to add? Go ahead, Officer Chamberlain. All right, I love this stuff. Uh, in regards to basketball nets, I'm looking at uh, putting in two new nets at uh, the old uh, youth policing building along 8th Avenue near uh, Ernest Cumberland and Holy Family uh, this summer. It's uh, something I just need town approval for, and I will uh, do that labor and uh, cover the cost of it myself. I did something very similar at the door uh, two summers ago. So I'm looking to do uh, the same type of system and uh, do it there. Uh, in regards to the Faulkner Park, I know there's a hillside along the fence. Um, if the town would allow, we could absolutely put in uh, a dirt pump track, which would be free of charge uh, and could be done by uh, the youth volunteers to create that. Uh, it's another, it's free. The hill's there. We wouldn't have to dig very much into the hill, but we would be creating uh, basically a looping path along that space that wouldn't be utilized at all by anyone. Um, so I'm just trying to think out of the box, you utilize space that someone might not touch. I'm not sure exactly where your park is. I think I know where it is. So that's why I'm kind of saying that fenced area that runs right over to the new tech arena. So yeah. uh, these are some ideas we could always come to town council and present and try to show how uh, uh, the all-wheel skate park uh, team uh, will come in and can transfer, transform a small place and create a network within the new Tecumseh area uh, to bring more and more people to this uh, area. Once they know it's it's here and it's popular, we can we can do that. Great, Brent. I stole your job, Sydney. Back to you. Uh, just to play off on what Matthew said, uh, if you're unaware of CrossNet, I don't know if anybody here is familiar with CrossNet. Uh, it's uh, a new version of volleyball. It's great. Um, I just suggest maybe if uh, people have time, just look up CrossNet when we continue this discussion as an alternative to a volleyball net per se, uh, just for foot space, 
uh, the fact that you can play individually with two people with smaller groups. Um, but yeah, just check out CrossNet. Maybe we could add that into the discussion. Okay, did anyone else have any more questions? Or... Yep, go ahead, Matthew. Last one, I know this isn't really about parks, it's kind of about transportation, it just came up to me now, just looking at my notes previously, but I was looking at different, like this is about like downtown, like trucks and stuff like that, because I know I was reading a lot about like towns of Bolton and Orangeville and stuff like that. One of the things I always hear this from other people around town is that they don't understand how those big 18 wheelers are allowed to go down like the main strip of um, Alliston, like um, Wellington, I guess, Highway 89, I guess through downtown because I've seen it one time, they literally make holes in the roads and stuff like that. It may sound like a dumb thing, but example in Bolton and stuff like that, I know because I was talking with the police officers there that if you go down on those roads in, the, in those 18 wheelers, you fully get a fine, which especially in Allison, now you have the roundabout around the arena to go around that downtown area because it's definitely not safe, especially a lot of kids and people walking downtown now in days and especially taking those turns in some of those corners may be kind of difficult. So I, I just wanted to see if that was even in consideration. Officer Chamberlain, that's a question for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They are uh, not allowed to go through the downtown core unless they have a local delivery. Um, when you're driving into town via 89 before it turns into Victoria or Young, there are there is signage for all trucks to use the bypass. Um, you said, I think, I believe you have a G1. So next time you're uh, driving over there with your parents, take a look at the signs. It is there. If uh, I have seen them, I have lived here in town for over 11 years now. So I have seen them myself. And uh, this is something the traffic enforcement unit uh, maybe can pay some attention to for a little while plus local Alston zone one units can take uh, pay attention and get some education from the traffic units on how to best deal with uh, commercial trucks and uh, and the drivers okay thank you well Sydney I'm looking at the clock and it says 823. Where are we at in the agenda? Are we nearly through? Uh, yep, that's it. That's the last thing on our agenda. So if that's no one it. has anything else to hmm. add. Okay. Um, can... So before we wrap up, um, Pam, in terms of setting a date for the next meeting, I'm looking at the month of February and I'm seeing conference on the 25th. Yeah, I would suggest possibly the first week in March. Okay. March 4th. Yeah, the 4th would be fine. How's Thursday, March 4th for everybody? Um, Pam, is there any way that we can get it in February though? Well, it would be is there, um, so where are we now? So I'm looking 18th is a library board meeting. Yeah, and that would be that week. I can't do it the last week. Yeah, I cannot do it the last week yeah. of February. And then the week before that, we had the library. We have family day and that wouldn't. So um, yeah, the 16th or the 17th would be possible, which is not quite four weeks from now. Um, can, is March not good, Sydney? Um, I just want us to like meet as um, soon as possible. Um, I don't want to delay it at all. Can we look at the 17th? Sure, yeah, that's what the committee wants to do. Okay. Hey, does February 17th look good for everyone? Yeah, go ahead, friends. Go ahead. 
the only question I would have with regards to the date, because we've offered Elise and uh, Officer Chamberlain to come back to the next mm -hmm. meeting and give updates. Will that give enough time? I was wondering the same thing. And then the one after that, there's the week of a conference. And Pam has a very busy last week of February. So I think it's going to have to be March because there are three other meetings scheduled, the uh, four other meetings scheduled in the last two weeks. So um, Pam will be very busy. However, Thursday, March the 4th, I think is a pretty open week, isn't it, Pam? Yeah, uh, for me, that would be good. We have council on Monday and planning possibly on the Wednesday. Yeah, uh, okay. But yeah, the fourth is fine and yeah. That gives us about, that gives us five weeks, Sydney. Okay. If we did it on the 17th, I think that only gives us about three, three and a half. I'm thinking the fourth, is the fourth okay with everybody? Yeah. Just for me. Okay. Okay, so let's set it for Thursday, March the 4th at 7 p.m. And one thing I'd like you to think about for the next meeting is with social media being the way it is, and some of us are of age and some of us are not, um, I'm wondering what, what do you think about putting a website or a page on New Tecumseh's website? I'm thinking like newtecumseh.ca slash youth. So if anybody went to that link on the town's website, it would go directly to a youth specific, youth centric page that would have resources, programming, questions, con all kinds of things. So I'm just wondering if, if we could get council approval to put something like that in place, what are the kinds of things that you would want to see on a website? So if you were to be, if you lived in Toronto and you went to toronto.ca, what would you be looking for as a youth in terms of services or contacts or things you want to do or things you want to see? Um, think about things like that, because I think that that would be a great resource for everybody and it would be a great port of contact. And it would also be a great place for you guys as a committee to showcase the work that you're doing. You could put your meeting agendas up there. We could put links to the meetings so that you, you and your friends can watch them if there was something you missed or something you wanted somebody to see. Like we could make that page all about you and all about youth in New Tecumseh. So think about something like that because I think that that kind of thing, because we can't do a lot and because we're not going to be able to do a lot anytime soon, I think we have to sort of do what Elise is doing and do what Joe is doing and, and embrace the virtual thing for the next few months. And I think that um, creating a one-stop shop for, for kids to be able to, to go, like we tell, we tell, I tell residents and, and people all the time, oh, log on to the website. You can pay your bills, you can pay your taxes, you can book, book everything. You can book an event, you can sign your kid up for this, but there's nothing for kids to do on there. There's nothing for kids to look at. And I think that that's an opportunity for us. So I think that uh, having, a, uh, having a, a portal or a place that you guys can go to and add to and build on throughout the next two years, I think that that, I think that, that creates a bit of a legacy for you guys as well. And I want that, to, uh, I think that that would be a great thing. So think about the kinds of things that you would wanna see on that website, okay? And if there's nothing else, the time is at 8.30 on the nose. Look at that. Were there any other questions or anything before we wrapped up? Joe? Sorry, just on your note of the website, if uh, the youth committee can look at the Nottawa Saga or collaborative Nottawa Saga site, uh, there is a youth tab on there. Um, those are just some of the resources that are connecting youth. Uh, right now, we're doing a project for all feeder schools, 19, grade 6s to grade 8, to get them on that website. 
uh, and learn what resources that are available to them. But there's absolutely, and it's run by, uh, it's managed by us, uh, the OPP and others. But there's no reason why uh, the tab can't be altered or uh, your component can't be inserted right in there. It would be yeah. super easy, keeps it uh, together. And if we're already getting the feeder schools right now, Essa Township uh, feeder schools are involved in this. Uh, the next is the southern uh, hemisphere of our uh, of our tri county here. So uh, we've already done Alliston, but uh, the kids know the website. The website got I think like 500 hits last month, uh, and that's those are all new users. So now they know moving forward into high school, uh, a ton of different resources that are available. So you it, take a look at it. Maybe we can uh, group it together. I'll speak to Sergeant Bulligan in regards to that and uh, let her know that I've put it out there. But it's uh, it's there. Great. And that's what I mean. Like, those are the kinds of, like, that's just one of many initiatives that we can link and put everything in one, in one place for people, right? Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, I guess the only thing left to do is have a motion to adjourn. Moved by Matthew, seconded by France. All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a good evening and uh, take care. We'll see you in March. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.